Here's the truth. God is beautiful. To study God, to do theology, is to gaze upon the beauty of God. An aspect of God's beauty is that God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Like all beautiful things, we can't ever fully fathom it, but we can grasp it. This is how I find the beauty of God in the Trinity. It's not a perfect thought, but I hope it's a faithful one. It begins with an understanding of God as a father, as a person. The paternal parental heart is key to understanding this. The heart of a parent is to give ourselves away. We don't just want to pass on our genes. We want to place as much of ourselves as we can into the other, into our child. We pour out our energy, our vitality, our wisdom, our values, our very sense of self. This is what it means to beget, for someone to be begotten. God the Father begets of himself. This is not something the Father chose to do at some point in time. It's who he is. His begetting is eternal. It has always been. And it is perfect. It is utterly complete. And the one who is begotten is so perfectly and eternally begotten of the Father that he is the same as the Father, except he is not the Father. God the Son is a different person, but he is the same essence. Remember, this is eternal. There was never a moment when the Father did not beget the Son and the Son was not begotten. And remember, this is perfect. Without the Son, the Father is not the Father and the Son is not the Son and neither of them are God. In fact, we can look at the essence of this relationship. It itself perfectly and eternally embodies the essence of God. It is the power of God. It is the Spirit of God. As we gaze upon it, we are gazing upon God's essence. This Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father's eternal outpouring into the Son perfectly and eternally. The Spirit is different to both Father and the Son, but is the same essence. Remember, this is eternal. There was never a moment when the Spirit did not manifest in the Father's begetting of the Son. And remember, this is perfect. Without the Spirit, the Father is not the Father, and the Son is not the Son, and the Father and the Son cannot be in this eternal and perfect relationship without manifesting their Spirit. Three in one, a perfect and eternal dance of being, blessed Trinity. This is beautiful in itself, but it's not just a matter of static theory. We have the scriptures, the testimony of how God has created and made us his own. We think of God the creator. We think of the Son as the word of God through whom all things were made. So we can imagine that point of creation when the Father pours out his creative heart into the Son. Let there be light. And the Son's agreement of yes and amen is manifested in the Spirit who hovers over the waters. In their very agreement, is the power to bring forth a hundred billion galaxies. We can imagine that point of creation when the Father's heart cries out to make us his children. Let us make them in our own image is an expression of mutual agreement and joy, a yes and amen, and the Spirit breathes into clay and brings forth our first parents. And we can imagine that point when we turned our hearts away from God, disobeying and separating ourselves from him. The Father's heart is towards our salvation. Out of the divine agreement, the Spirit moves in and around Abraham and Moses and David, the law, the prophets, the Psalms, slowly and surely revealing the way of God and wooing our hearts. And we can imagine the Father's heart. Let us save them. Let us be with them. Let us do what they cannot do. And as the Son responds with faithful agreement, the Spirit hovers over the womb of a young woman in Israel. And now the Father's eternal and perfect begetting is focused and contained and manifest in the weak flesh of one of us, his people. God has become one of us. God the Son is incarnate in Jesus our Saviour. And what is eternal and perfect continues. The Father pours out his will into Jesus his Son, and in the faithfulness and obedience of the Son, the Spirit is manifest as miracles and freedom and truth and light, 
I only do what I see the Father doing, says Jesus, and what we see him doing is amazing. The heart of God is to persist with us, to take responsibility for his children, to pay the price for our sin, to manifest both justice and mercy. It leads to the cross. We see the wrestle of God the Son in the garden. If this cup can pass from me, but not my will, but yours be done, he says. And on the cross he fathoms the depths of human depravity with the deeper well of God's love until his yes and amen turns into into your hands I commit my spirit. The father responds, Be raised and be lifted, be appointed as the king of all creation, the firstborn from the dead. And in the yes and amen the spirit moves within a tomb and the grave is empty. And now the Son is ascended on high, still incarnate, still one of us, still God the Son. And here's the joy. In the eternal and perfect relationship of the Father, the Son is there representing us, interceding for us. He has brought us to himself if we would trust him and follow him. He has made us his own. He has filled us with his Spirit. So where are we in this picture of beauty? We are not on the outside praying to God like an awkward friend trying to enter the conversation. We are with Jesus. We are in Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are with him, embraced by the very heart of God. Now we also in Christ can hear the will of the Father. We also in Christ can say yes and amen. And we also, in Christ, are empowered by the Spirit to manifest his will and purpose. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And it is beautiful.